Amen. Good morning, church. How's everybody doing this morning? Amen. Let's give God a hand of praise. Amen. Amen. Welcome. Let's all stand to our feet and let's uh, sing. Let's give God praise. He gives us joy. Amen. Let's put our hands together. Father, thank you for your love, Lord. thank you for your joy, there's beauty, let's sing it out, there's beauty in my brokenness, I got you love, it's better there's freedom though you captured me, I got joy instead of morning, there's beauty in my brokenness, This freedom, though you captured me, I'm gonna join instead of morning. You give me joy down deep in my soul, down deep in my soul, down deep in my soul. You give me joy down deep in my soul, down deep in my soul, down deep in my soul. Down deep in my brokenness. There's beauty in my brokenness. I've got true love instead of pain. This freedom, though you captured me, I've got joy instead of mourning. There's beauty in my brokenness. I've got true love instead of I'm going to join instead of morning. You give me joy down deep in my soul. Down deep in my soul. Down deep in my soul. You give me joy down deep in my soul. Down deep in my soul. Down deep in my soul. Give us joy, Lord. You give me joy. Down deep in my soul, down deep in my soul, you give me joy. Down deep in my soul, down deep in my soul, down deep in my soul. Never been so free. Never been so free, God in your love for me. Never been more secure, knowing your heart. Never been so free, God, in your love for me. Never been more secure, knowing your heart. Sing it again. Never been so free, God, in your love for me. Thank you, Lord. Never been more secure, knowing your heart, Lord. Never been so free, God, in your love for me. Yes, Lord. Never been more secure. Down deep in my soul, down deep in my soul, you give me joy. Down deep in my soul, down deep in my soul, down deep in my soul. Down deep in my soul. You give me joy. Down deep in my soul, down deep in my soul, down deep in my soul. Down deep in my soul, you give me joy. Down deep in my soul, down deep in my soul, down deep in my soul, you give me joy. Amen. Amen, church. Does he give you joy this morning? Amen. Let's give God another hand of praise. Amen. 
Amen. Father, we love you so much, Lord. We thank you for bringing us here safely, Lord, in your house. Father, we, we, we want you to lead us this morning. As we sing songs of praise to you and we offer up our sacrifice of praise, Lord, unto you. May you accept it, Lord. Father God, it may be difficult for some, uncomfortable, inconvenient for some, but that's why it's a sacrifice. We're going to put away the things that hinder us this morning from worshiping you and giving you all the glory and honor that you deserve, Lord God, because you give us joy. And so, Father, we give you glory and honor. Go before us, Lord God. Be glorified. Be honored. Be exalted. In your mighty name, Lord, we pray. We all say, amen. God is good. Amen. Amen. The new song we're going to sing this morning called, We Praise You. Follow along, very simple, but it's very true. Amen. We're not going to let fear stop us from worshiping God. We're not going to let inconvenience, like I shared earlier, stop us from worshiping Jesus. We're not going to let the circumstances in our lives or in this world stop us from giving praise and glory to our Savior for all that he's done. Amen, church. Are you with me this morning? Amen. 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 Yes. Put your hands together. See the first verse and it goes like this. Then praise be your weapon that silence saves the enemy. Then praise be your weapon that conquers all anxiety. Let it rise. Let praise arise. Sing your name in the dark and it changes everything. Sing with all we are and claim your victory. Let it rise. Let praise arise. We'll see you break down every wall. We'll watch the giants fall. You cannot survive when you praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side. Forever lift him. All creation cry, God, we praise you. No, we praise you. No, we praise you. No, we praise you. No, we praise you. Amen. Let faith be the song. Stored inside of me, let it rise. Let faith arise. We'll see you break down every wall. You watch the giants fall. If you cannot survive when we praise you, the light of the truth on our side forever.
This morning, amen, church. Amen. Oh, Father God, we worship you this morning. We just come before your throne, Lord, in your presence with a heart of thanksgiving, a humble heart, Lord. We thank you for coming to this earth, this world, to die for our sins, Lord. We worship you. Lift, lift it up 
Jesus this morning with our Savior, our Lord, we lift you up, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Father, you remind us, Lord, that you are the one that breaks down the walls, Lord, and we just strengthen our faith, and no matter the circumstance, Lord, but that we give it to you, Lord, and we know that we have faith that you are the one that is the provider, and you are the one that is in control, Lord. You said in your word that we walk through the valley of shadow of death. We fear no evil. Hallelujah. Lord, and we feel strengthened today with the words, hallelujah, and these songs, Lord. We just fought. thank you, Father, for all the wonderful things you continue to do in our lives, Father God. And we pray for the viewers, Lord, that are here um, online as well as those in our in our building today, Father. We just thank you, Father. Protect them in the name of Jesus. Yes. Give them comfort, Lord, for those that might need comfort, Lord Jesus. Lord, and we just thank you, Father. 
and we thank you for our service today, Lord. We thank you, Father, for your word reminding us, Lord, that we know we say that we love you, Lord God, and this reminds us in our word, Lord, reminder, Father, that how much we love you, Lord. We thank you. We give you glory and honor in your service today, and all of God's people say, amen, amen. amen. Praise God. I want to ask you guys, you can um, please be seated, and right now we're going to go into receiving we're going to receive the offerings and tithes today. And those of you that are online, please feel free to, um, to re also donate your offerings and your tithing on our website today. And uh, we're going to go ahead and look to the Lord right now. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord God, because you are so faithful to your word, always, Lord. We're so thankful for your provision. We thank you for your guidance. We thank you for your wisdom and all of our resources, Father God. Bless the hands, Lord, that um, are able to give, Lord, and the hearts, Lord. That's what's most important, that we give with a cheerful heart, Lord Jesus. Those that might be out there suffering today, Father, feel their need, Lord. Feel them, feel their heart, Lord. We give you all the honor and glory in everything we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise God. We're going to go into our, our preaching today. Please welcome our pastor, David Foy, today for the word. Amen. Amen. Thank you, worship team. Good morning, church. Merry Christmas. We're still celebrating Christmas. Amen. Every day is Christmas. 
but also praying a blessed week and going into our new year, 2021. Amen. God is going to continue to do wonderful and new things. And I pray that blessing upon you today. Church family, if you have your Bibles with you this morning, would you please turn with me to the book of Esther, chapter 9 and 10. We're going to be finishing off this morning the book of Esther. We're going to be looking at chapters 9 and 10. And when you get there, just say amen. But God has done, God has done a lot of great things this year as we look back what God has done this year. We planned for a lot of things, but God changed it up. Amen. <laughs> and as we saw in Proverbs chapter 16, a couple of weeks ago, as we were journeying through the book of Esther, that we plan, we make our plans, but God directs the path. And uh, we experienced that this past holiday. We, we planned to do something for Christmas with the family, but God had different plans. Amen. And when we're stripped away from all of the things that we are comfortable with or that we're used to, like the song says, you know, when all is stripped away, all the music and all the lights are gone, it's all about me. No. It's all about my issues. It's all about my sorrows. No. It's all about Jesus. Amen. And so this weekend, I, I trust you guys had a Merry Christmas, a blessed Christmas. Whether you were at home or with family, it's all about Jesus. Amen. Because he's the reason for the season. Amen. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Ask God to bless our time together. But Father, we love you and we thank you so much. We thank you for this time of worship that we just had, Lord. As we sung, Lord, that you are faithful, you are greater than our issues and our problems, our sufferings. Lord God, those things are brought to us, Lord, by your sovereign will, that we would see and know that you are God, you are living, you are active in our every moment in life, but also to know that you will provide a way for us out. You will make a way that we will see you, glorify you, come back to you with a humble heart and give you thanks and praise, Lord. And so, Father, we thank you for this past Friday as we celebrated Christmas, the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ, Emmanuel, with us. Father, as we look into your word and as we close out the book of Esther, Lord, we thank you for speaking to each and every one of us in our own situation Father, how good you are and how you will always make a way for us, even when we're in, in, a, in a corner, stressed out and depressed, whatever it may be in life, we know, Lord, that there is a way out with you, that all things with you, Lord, are possible so that it would give you glory and honor. Father, speak through me. Speak to your people. May your anointing break every yoke that we are struggling with today. And Father, we are careful to give you all the glory and honor in your son Jesus' mighty name. And all of God's people said, amen. God is good. Amen, church? <clears throat> As we're closing the book of Esther, we see we've been journeying through this book a little over a month, about five weeks, including today. First two chapters that we looked into, chapters 1 and chapter 2, God is preparing you for greatness. God is preparing Esther and Mordecai for greatness. And we've seen that happen. Taking Esther for, from just an ordinary girl, Mordecai as well, ordinary man going, going about their daily business and setting them up for greatness. We see that in chapter 3 and chapter 4, God was preparing the way for them, giving them favor. As we've seen also in chapter 5 and 6, grace, favor, and honor upon Esther and Mordecai. Last week, chapter 7 and 8, trusting and enduring in Christ Jesus, that he will make a way, even when the wicked man Haman sets up his plot to annihilate and kill and destroy the Jews. God makes a way. Amen? 
just in time. He's never too late. He is always on time. Amen? We may be late. Our friends may be late. Our family members late always, right? We're late. I'm always late. But God is never late. And right in that time when we need the uh, most the help, God provides a way. He brings a person into your life and blesses you with words of of encouragement, words of, uh, of, of, of affirmation, words of uh, correction. We need that correction as well. But we trust in Christ Jesus and we endure the hardships in life and watch God work in all the details of our lives. We know that we don't read of the name of God in the book of Esther but we see God's hand working sovereignly and providentially in the book of Esther. So today, as we look into the last two chapters, the title of my message this morning is Promotion Comes from the Lord and Him Alone. I mean, Mordecai couldn't have done this on his own. Esther couldn't have done it on her own. They didn't have ties or didn't know anybody in high places in the kingdom of of King Ahasuerus. Nobody. And perhaps that's us this morning. We don't know anybody. We don't we may not know how God is going to make that deliverance or that promotion in our life. But God works it out in his own way so that we can't boast about it. Right. We can't boast about anything that we can can do. And that's God's plan for us is that when we see God moving in our lives, we only turn back to him with a humble heart and a grateful heart and say, Lord, I, I, I even more so in 2021, I trust in you and know that you are going to deliver me and give me victory in 2021. And he has given us victory in 2020. Amen? He has delivered us From so many things. Even in the midst of death. He has delivered us. I lost my younger brother. Well, we we tend to say lost all the time. But he promoted into heaven. Amen. Graduated into heaven. I mean, that's the reason why we're here every Sunday. Is we're preaching about heaven. And when we fulfill that purpose and that call In our lives, we call it a promotion. Promotion comes from the Lord and not our strength. Ephesians 2 tells us we're not saved by our own works. We're saved by the grace of God. Our faith in Christ Jesus alone. Not of our works, lest we should boast about it. But we are saved by his grace alone. And so this morning, I want to remind you, church, promotion, victory, amen. Deliverance, peace, comfort, joy comes from the Lord. And so as we're reading in in Esther chapter 9 and 10, we'll see the promotions of God. But I want to encourage you, whatever it is that you're lacking this morning or feel a void, replace it with the word promotion and put joy, love, because it's true. Christ Jesus is a source of it all. Amen? It comes from him and him alone. Whatever is good, pure. Whatever is glorifying unto him. Let's read verse 1 this morning. Chapter 9 of the book of Esther, verse 1 says, Now in the twelfth month, that is the month of Adar, on the thirteenth day, the time came for the king's command and his decree to be executed. On the day that the enemies of the Jews had hoped to overpower them, the opposite occurred in that the Jews themselves overpowered those who hated them. Now, just to bring us up to speed, Haman's decree went out to all the provinces on the month of Adar, which is about February or March of that same year. This is now the 13th day. That all the enemies of the Jews can attack the Jews. And this is what it's saying. Verse 1. That day has finally come to pass. 
But look at what happens. The God of reversal. The God who can renew everything. Amen? Amen. And it says, the opposite occurred for the Jews in that the Jews themselves overpowered those who hated them. When the decree went out, when Haman wrote that, it, it gave them months in advance to prepare for this attack. It, it says that in the beginning of the year, Haman casted lots. But things didn't go well for Haman because his plot was exposed. And the king found out about it. Esther told who the adversary was, and it was Haman. And just in time, they found out what they were about to do in the month of Adar. It gave the Jews about eight months to prepare for this attack. They were hoping to creep up on the Jews and catch them by surprise and having them worry all these months. But how many know that God steps in and changes things? And it gives the Jews an ample amount of time to prepare for what's about to happen. Haman is hung on the gallows that he prepared for Mordecai, but then he ended up getting hung on himself. He is the God of reversals. He is the God that changes things. And it says here in verse 1, God gave them a power. I believe that that's where the power came from for the Jews, a power enough that they would overpower those who hated them. Verse 2, let's continue. The Jews gathered together in their cities throughout all the provinces of King Ahasuerus to lay hands on those who sought their harm. And no one could withstand them because fear of them fell upon all people. When God is on your side, amen, there is nothing that can be against you. It is God that gives you the power. It is God that gives you the strength. Do you believe that, church? Isaiah chapter 54, verse 17 says, No weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue which rises against you in judgment, you shall condemn. In other words, when people say bad things about you or defame you, in the most wicked and wrongful way, God will vindicate and protect you. Why? Because you are walking in his truths. You are a child of God who is living holy and righteous according to his words. So this does pertain to the one who is righteous and holy. That When the enemy comes up and crafts all these weapons against you, the Bible says that no weapon formed against you shall prosper and every wicked tongue who speaks evil against you, you will condemn. This is the heritage of the servants. Amen? Of the Lord. This is your heritage. Your inheritance. This is who you are, church. You are a child of God. And it says, and their righteousness is from me. He will bring you vindication and justice. Isaiah says, says the Lord, a word from God. Just to let you know this morning that everything is going to be okay in 2020. Everything is going to be okay in 2021. Though hardships may come, you know what? We're still going to praise God because no weapon formed against you and I will prosper. Even if it takes our life, guess what? It's all good. I'm just here temporarily. I'm meant for heaven. Amen? Amen. Yes, you can give God praise for that. It is a win-win situation for the believer in Christ, for the Christian, the born-again Christian who has given their life to Jesus. Not a church, not denomination. Not religious activities or duties, but a true relationship with Jesus. John chapter 3 tells us, Jesus says, you must be born again. Let the word 
of God wash you from inside out. That's how you are saved this morning. Be born again. I trust that. That as we go into 2021, his words are true even more so. It has been true for thousands of years from the beginning of time, and it will be true tomorrow and next year. God is good. Amen, church? Verse 3, let's continue on. And all the officials of the provinces, the satraps, the governors, and all those doing the king's work helped the Jews because the fear of Mordecai fell upon them. Mordecai is a great man now, second in command equivalent to a prime minister doing the works on the behalf of the king, Ahasuerus. And he's got favor. His cousin's, in, his cousin's the queen, Queen Esther. And he rises up. And fear begins to fall upon all of those in the provinces because Mordecai is a righteous man. And that fear is not a fear that they should run away, but a fear of respect. Fear it because Mordecai is a righteous and holy man who will conduct the works of the king in a righteous manner. And he will carry out the plans of our God, Jehovah, Amen. in a worthy manner as well. Verse 4, for Mordecai was great in the king's palace and his fame spread throughout all the provinces for this man, Mordecai, became increasingly prominent. Remember Mordecai in the first opening chapters? He was just an ordinary man, but then Esther became queen. He was upgraded, promoted partially to the king's gate. Now he could come a little bit closer to the king's gate where they do business. He can listen in. But now he's second in command. He is inside the king's palace. He was outside the king's gate before, but now he's inside conducting business. And he's inspiring and influencing the king, King Ahasuerus. Look at what verse 4 says. He has three things about Mordecai. He is a great man, number one. He is a famous man, and he is a prominent man. He is a man of influence. He is widely known and he is honored. And he stands out for what is right. He is bold. And not only that, he is a brilliant man. And I believe that he was not just uh, spend or spreading his fame, but he was spreading the fame of our God, Jehovah. Amen. And letting them know who is really in charge. Mordecai is now large and in charge in the king's palace. And he is pointing to God, the creator, the one alone. Because promotion comes from the Lord. Amen. And, and so far in these first four verses, we see that deliverance comes from the Lord. Amen. We can never go wrong with Christ Jesus on our side. Amen. Trust in him. Taste and see that he is good and watch him do miraculous things in your life that you can never imagine. Trust me. He's, look at me. He saved me. A wretch, a, a mess up, a hypocrite. And anyone who would stand before you and share the testimonies and what God has done, trust them because they used to be in the world. They used to be lost. But thank God for his grace and his mercy. Amen? Amen. Verses 5 to 10, let's read along. Thus the Jews defeated all their enemies with the stroke of the sword, with slaughter and destruction, and did what they pleased with those who hated them. And in Shushan, the Citadel, the Jews killed and destroyed 500 men locally within the capital area, Shushan, Shushan the Citadel. Also, Parshantatha, Dauphin, Aspatha, Paratha, Adalia, Aridatha, 
Parmashta, Arisal, Aridal, Aridai, and Vajazatha. I had to practice all those names just to get them right. <clears throat> they came out smoothly like that. You know what I'm saying? Man, that's some, those are some hard work uh, names. But these were the sons of Haman, the son of Hamadatha, the enemy of the Jews. Look at how they're described. Just to let you know that these are the ten sons of Haman, who was the son of Hamadatha, who was, who was an Agagite, an enemy of the Jews, the Bible says here. They are killed. But they did not lay a hand on the plunder. So they didn't take what was owned by these, these uh, the sons of, of, of Haman. All their jewelry, all their goods, they just left it alone. That was a commandment for them. When you go and do this to those that hate you and bring harm to you, desire to an annihilate you, don't take their goods. Leave it. That belongs to the enemy. God is your inheritance, church. God will provide for you. God will bless you. Don't take the enemy's goods. You go out there, you pray for the enemy. You pray for people out here in the streets. And then you want to adapt their ways and their goods. And then it influences and inspires you to do what is wicked and evil. And we're commanded here, when you go out and do this, and you annihilate the enemy. Leave their goods. Don't adopt their customs. Leave them where they're at. Leave their gods to be their gods. Because you serve the almighty God. Amen, Amen church? Amen. And we'll see that phrase here in the next few verses. They did not lay a hand on the plunder. They did not take their plunder for their possession. They just left it. They burnt it. Left it alone. Verse 11 to 13. On that day, the number of those who were killed in Shushan, the citadel, was brought to the king. And the king said to Queen Esther, the Jews have killed and destroyed 500 men in Shushan, the citadel. And the ten sons of Haman, what have they done in the rest of the king's provinces? Now, what is your petition? The king asks Queen Esther again, what is it? Is your request again? It shall be granted to you. Or what is your further request? It shall be done. Verse 13, Esther said, If it pleases the king, let it be granted to the Jews who are in Shushan to do again tomorrow according to today's decree. And let Haman's ten sons be hanged on the gallows. Esther once again gives her final request for what is to happen, and that request is within the city. I request that whatever the Jews have done today on the 13th day, that the king would grant for the Jews once again to do that on the 14th day. That they would protect themselves. Whatever would come against them once again, that they would protect and defend what is theirs? Their people, women, their younger children. And in verse 14 to 17, we read, So the king commanded this to be done. The decree was issued in Shushan, and they hanged Haman's ten sons. You might be thinking, man, that's pretty violent. That's pretty gruesome. But the reason for this was to prove that they really did die by the destruction of the Jews. These were men who were wicked and evil, who wanted to destruct and annihilate, just like their father Haman, the Jews. And in order for them to, to get rid of what was going to come in generations to come, in this time, it was necessary. God commanded for them to hang all of their sons to prove to the world, prove to the kingdom that this will happen to anyone who will come against the children of God. Amen. To be hung out in public and to prove to the enemies of the Jews that this too will happen Amen. if you come against the people of God. Church, be encouraged today. That God is on your side. He is protecting you. Do not be afraid because he is with you. 
Amen? But also be obedient to every command that he gives you to do. He says, don't take possession of their plunder. Expose the works of the enemy out in the public. Why is it that we have to share in public our faith? Because the enemy exposes us. The enemy comes to attack us in public. And so we, we, not, we ought not to be ashamed of our faith. We share that in public to anyone that we come in contact with. Who's your God? Who's your Lord? It is Jesus Christ. We celebrate him every single day. We celebrate his birth and we celebrate his death because it proves that he came to save us. He came to die and he rose again from the dead. We serve a living God, amen, amen. who is victorious to us. He is leading our every way. This is what Proverbs chapter 16, I mentioned this earlier. Verse 1 to 3, Proverbs 16, verse 1 to 3. And it says this. The preparations of the heart belong to man, but the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. All the ways of a man are pure in his own eyes, but the Lord weighs the spirits. So this is what we ought to do. We commit our works to God. And your thoughts will be established. I believe this is what he, uh, um, Mordecai and Esther did. No longer our will, but your will be done, Lord. So we commit our works to you, Lord God. So that our thoughts will be what? Established. That you, Lord God, would fulfill our every request. Which is on the 14th day, once again, the Jews will defend themselves. And we will see the enemy fall by the strike of the sword, by the people of God, for his glory. Amen? God is taking care of his people. God will take care of you and I, regardless of what comes our way, church. Be encouraged today. Let's continue reading. <clears throat> Verses 15, and the Jews who were in Shushan gathered together again on the 14th day of the month of Adar and killed 300 men at Shushan, but they did not lay a hand on the plunder. Here we go again. We're reminded, do not lay a hand on their possessions or their plunder. Verse 16, the remainder of the Jews in the king's provinces gathered together and protected their lives, had rest from their enemies, and killed 75,000 of their enemies but they did not lay a hand on the plunder. This was on the 13th day of the month of Adar. And on the 14th uh, of the month, they rested and made it a feast, a day of feasting and gladness. Why are they glad now? They're glad because God has given them victory over their enemies. God has provided the way for them. God has protected them. And so as we know on Christmas, most of you guys were feasting with gladness, right? Were you around the table feasting with your families? Feasting with gladness, why? Because your Savior is born. Your Savior who has come to, to bring you salvation. Your Savior who has come to die for your sins and mine. For a debt that we cannot pay on the cross, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ came to defeat sin and death once and for all. This is the picture that we're given here today. They are resting. They have defeated the enemy. And now they are feasting with gladness. Amen? How many of you are glad this morning for what God has done for you in your life? By revealing his son to you, his truths in our lives by revealing to us that we need a savior that we need to be changed from the inside our minds the way we talk the way we think the way we live I thank God for that because only God can change us only God can change me man amen nobody else I thank God for his grace and his mercy. 
upon us. As we continue to read in verse 18 and 22, this is what that feast, the feast that Esther gave to them, or, or the, uh, the decree that Esther gave on the 14th day, and now they're feasting. This is what that feasting was. In verse 18 to 22, let's read together. It says, but the Jews who were at Shushan assembled together on the eight, 13th day, as well as on the 14th. And on the 15th of the month, they rested and made it a day of feasting and gladness. Therefore, the Jews of the villages who dwelt in the unwalled towns celebrated the 14th day of the month, who were outside of the provinces, outside of the town of Shushan. They celebrated on the 14th day on the month of Adar with gladness and feasting as a holiday and for sending presents to one another. Amen. Because God has delivered them. This is what we, we were just celebrating this past week, giving gifts to one another, being thankful in our hearts, giving gifts, showing love to our loved ones. And it was definitely a holiday for us. Amen. Praise God for his purposes in giving us a, a reason to celebrate, a reason to be joyful. Verse 20, and Mordecai wrote these things and sent letters to all the Jews near and far who were in all the provinces of King Ahasuerus to establish among them that they should celebrate yearly the 14th and 15th days of the month of Adar as the days on which the Jews had rest from their enemies as a month which was turned from sorrow to joy for them, and from mourning to a holiday, that they should make them days of feasting and joy, of sending presents to one another and gifts to the poor. It was now made an official law that every year when this day and year month comes around, remember all that God has done for you. Amen? I think there's one thing that I always remember. I believe this is the day I gave my life to Christ. Every year Thanksgiving season comes around, I remember the time I gave my life to the Lord. I mean, remember I was brought up in a Christian household, but I never had a relationship with Jesus. So it goes to prove that you can be in the right place at the right time, but never experience his grace and his mercy until God came to me that Thanksgiving weekend and enlighten my mind and my heart. Turn me from my wicked way. And showed me what love was and life with purpose and meaning was. I remember that every year. What is a year for you? What, what, what are the days or what are the months that you would always remember what Christ has done? Yes, the holidays that we celebrate, Christmas. Or, or as, as uh, Brother Mark Moore says, there's a... Uh, this type of Christian, CEO Christians, or Christmas, Easter only Christians. You only remember, remember Christ during Christmas or remember what he's done for you on Easter. But it should be on additional days that God has done something victorious for you, such as saving your life, providing for you a miraculous work. What is it, church? Always be mindful and grateful for what God has done in your life. Amen. And notice what he says here in verse 22, the latter part, feasting um, and joy of sending presents to one another and gifts to the poor. That not only do we send our gifts to one another that we love, but also take care of those who are needy in our community, in our lives. Let's continue to read on verse 23. To 25. So the Jews accepted the custom which they had begun, as Mordecai had written to them, because Haman, the son of Hamadatha the Agagite, the enemy of all the Jews, had plotted against the Jews to annihilate them and had cast pur. So pur is the original Babylonian word for casting lots, to consume them and destroy them. So casting lots equivalent to rolling a dice or flipping a coin. 
thinking that uh, whatever, whatever it falls on, this, is, this was what we're going to do. And this is what Haman did. He casted lots so that he can figure out what day and month that he would attack the Jews. But how many know that God is so sovereign and powerful, the creator of heaven and earth, of all universe? When he was casting lots, he already knew the days that Haman was going to attack. But he already knew what he was going to do with, with Mordecai and Esther. God's perfect will is done. So it says, this wicked plot which Haman had devised against the Jews should return on his own head, and that he and his sons should be hanged on the gallows, which we have just read that was done. Verse 26 so they call these days Purim. This is the Feast of Purim. This is what is called now for them. Every holiday that they remember, the Feast of Purim, after the name Pur. Therefore, because of all the words of this letter, what they had seen concerning this matter and what had happened to them, the Jews established and imposed it upon themselves and their descendants and all who would join them that without fail they should celebrate these two days every year according to be written uh, to the written instructions and according to the prescribed time. Verse 28. That these days should be remembered and kept throughout every generation, every family, every province, and every city that these days of Purim should not fail to be observed among the Jews and that the memory of them should not perish among their descendants. That we are to be reminded every year, in every city, every province, every family, that we should tell of God's good works, not just today, but also tomorrow and forever. Amen? That is our duty as parents and as leaders, is to tell the good works of God to every generation, to every nationality, every man, every woman, every boy and girl to all generations. Psalms 89 verse 1 says, I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. With my mouth will I make known your faithfulness to all generations. Amen. This is what the psalmist writes. Lord, I'm going to sing of your goodness and I will speak it out. I will open my mouth and declare your faithfulness not just to my nationality or my own people or my own community and family, but he says to all generations, every nation, tribe, and tongue, we will tell of, of God's faithfulness and goodness. And this was the letter that Mordecai has written out to all the provinces. Every year, this day and this month comes around. You and your family, in every city, Sit down and pray with your families. Tell them all that God has done for you in the king, kingdom of Persia, in Shushan. And that's what we do every Sunday. In all of our churches that we are partnering with, we speak the word of God. We teach the word of God. We preach the word of God. And we tell of his goodness and his faithfulness. Amen? It is not an option for us. It is a commandment for us to tell of his good news. And when we leave the church house today, that we meditate on the words of God and we go home, and when we are ready to lay ourselves to sleep or we have free time around our dinner tables and in our living rooms, we sit down with our families and we sing songs of praise. We open our mouths to give thanks to God and speak of his faithfulness to our children. And we pray that our children would do the same with their children and their children's children to all generations. Amen? A commandment for us. A charge and an encouragement for us, church. It is our responsibility, duty. And guess what? It is our privilege. What an honor that we get to talk about God's faithfulness. Amen.
Why? Because we've experienced God's faithfulness. We've gone through it. And he's been faithful to us. And why not tell the world of his good news, of his good works and good deeds? Amen? Not be ashamed of all that God has done. And we just finished the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 3, Paul encourages the church in Ephesus. Chapter 3, verse 21, he says, To him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations. Amen? Amen. To God be the glory in the church by Christ Jesus. Who's running this church? It is not me. It is not our pastoral leaders. It is God. It is Jesus who is running this church. Amen? This is God's church. And all of our churches within the, within the community, it is God's church. And if man tries to come against the church of Christ Jesus, I, I'm going to say what Haman's wife said, they will not prevail. They will not prevail. Because it is not man's church, it is God's almighty church. Amen? And because it is God's church, we have the responsibility to teach every word of God that is living and active to every generation, Paul says. To all generations. And then he closes off and he says, forever and ever, amen. It is sealed. It is done. No man can change it. It is God's plan, his purpose, his will. And to him be the glory and honor for it all. Amen. Verse 29 to 32, and we'll close out chapter 9, and then we'll close out chapter 10. Verse 29 says, The, the Queen Esther, the daughter of Abihel with Mordecai the Jew, wrote with full authority to confirm this second letter about Purim. And Mordecai sent letters to all the Jews, to the 127 provinces of the kingdom of Ahasuerus with words of peace and truth. This is what the good news is. It's words of peace and truth. It is good news. Amen. The good news is about to come to all the provinces that you can now live freely because God has overcome. God is victorious. Verse 31, to confirm these days of Purim at their appointed time, as Mordecai the Jew and Queen Esther had prescribed for them. And as they had decreed for themselves and their descendants concerning matters of their fasting and lamenting. So the, the decree of Esther confirmed these matters of Purim, and it was written in the book, in the book of Chronicles, in the kingdom of Persia, the kingdom of King Ahasuerus, it is now permanent and concrete. Every year, every month, every day, this is what you ought to do. Queen Esther, and those who have followed the ways of Jewish people, you can now live under this promise. You can now live under this hope. Celebrate in peace and in truth. Live freely unto God and glorify him. Notice he said in verse 31, the descendants, their descendants. This is their heritage that we read about earlier in, in, in Isaiah. This is your inheritance. This is your heritage. It's to live godly, live holy, and God will take care of you all the days of your life. And that is the good news. Amen. God will provide for each and every one of us. He will make a way. Because promotion comes from God and God alone. Amen. As we close out chapter 10, it's a few verses. But it closes off by talking about the man Mordecai. Second in charge. And let's read. In verse 1, and King Ahasuerus imposed tribute on the land and on the islands of the sea. Look at that, guys. We're, we're included in this. The islands of the sea. Yes, Tonga, Samoa, Fiji, 
whichever island you come from, the Caribbeans, Trinidad, Jamaica, hey, we are included in this prophecy. Actually, he's talking about probably all the Greek areas. And <laughs> but I love to read that it's, it's talking about the islands, right? <laughs> and, in, and, and in all truthfulness, we are all God's children, and, and uh, we're, we are a part of this good news. Amen. But I love seeing that and reading that. I just laughed and said, thank you, Lord, for, for bringing some joy and truth and peace to my life today. <laughs> Verse 2, now all the acts of his power and his might and the account of the greatness of Mordecai to which the king advanced him. Amen. Are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Media and Persia? For Mordecai the Jew was second to King Ahasuerus and was great among the Jews and well received by the multitude of of his brethren, seeking the good of his people and speaking peace to all his countrymen. This was the account of the man Mordecai, a man who was filled with intelligence, wisdom, and knowledge, not by himself, but who? But from God. From God. Amen. His promotion mentally came from God. His promotion and advancement financially came from God. Politically came from God. And spiritually came from God. Church. Amen. It says in the latter part of this verse 3. Said he was a man received well by the multitude of his brethren. At the end of our chapter of our life. May this be written about us, brothers and sisters, that we are well received by our brethren. Not because we're people pleasers and trying to, 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 to have it right with those that are, you know, and then, we, and then we sin and fall because we try to please people. No, but because we're like Mordecai, who is bold and brilliant and, and godly, doing what is righteous and holy. And the only person we are trying to please is, is God. Amen. And in the midst of this, they see the righteousness and holiness in Mordecai. And they say, I, he is a well-received person. A person who sought good of his people. Amen. A person who wasn't seeking uh, for himself, but what was good for his people. A person who spoke peace. Yeah. To all of his countrymen. God advanced him. The king saw favor in him. The king trusted him with his life. And Mordecai was a great man. He carried out what was righteous and good for the king and for the kingdom. Promotion comes from God and God alone. Amen, church? We ought not to worry about what we are going to do tomorrow what's going to come for us tomorrow how are you going to uh, provide for us God tomorrow because our source is God the maker of all things Amen. he is the source of peace and he is the source of love the source of it all trust in him and he will make a way continuously for each and every one of us Amen. Amen. he raises up Mordecai in Psalms 113 verses 7 to 8 it says as he raises the poor out of the dust and I just remember Mordecai crying with this sackcloth and ashes and he says and lifts the needy out of the ash heap that he may seat him with princes with the princes of his people this is what God does he raises you and I up and we can't even imagine what he's about to do. But the psalmist says that he may seat him, us, you and I, with princes, leaders of government leaders, those in high authority. He will use you and I and place us in the midst. Why? Because God is working in our lives and people are seeking godly people to take care of everything for them. And look at what he says here in the last part of this psalm with the princes of 
his people. Amen? He will, use in, you, he will use you and I and seat us within the princes with the princes of his people. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 27. I love this verse. Because I, I, can, I, I can identify with this one. God chooses, chooses the foolish things of this world. And I always tell myself, man, why did you use me, God? So foolish. I don't think much of myself, but you use me. The things of this world to put to shame the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of this world. And I often think of myself in that way. Lord, I'm weak. I can't do anything to push, put to shame the things which are mighty. And God has definitely done that with Queen Esther and Mordecai. And he says, I'll give you strength. I'll give you power. Don't worry. Just be my vessel. And I will fill you with my Holy Spirit. Amen, church? Amen. He will do that for you. He will place you in situations so that you would point back to Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior of all men. He has chosen each and every one of us for his purpose. And the wise will say, how, how, how did you do that, David? You don't have a degree in this. You don't have a degree in that. You have no knowledge in that. And all we are supposed to say, church, is what? Glory be to God. In the highest. It's all about Jesus. And that is an opportunity for you and I to talk about how God saved us. Amen? That's what Mordecai is known for. He talks about how God saved them in verse 3, chapter 10. He speaks the peace of God to all of his countrymen. That you and I, brothers and sisters, would not be ashamed to speak the truth of God to those around us. And how God has used the foolish things, the weak things. I hope you're not offended this morning when the scripture calls you foolish. No. But I hope that we would examine ourselves and take inventory and truthfully say, yes, Lord, I have been unwise in some ways. In my life before you came to take over, I was Hallelujah. foolish. Doing crazy things. But now you've changed my life. You've set my course straight and my path straight. And I give you the glory and honor today. Maybe 2021 is looking kind of crooked and uncertain for you today, church. I want to let you know that God will make a way for you. Trust him because promotion, provision, protection comes from the Lord. Amen. If you would turn with me to first Peter chapter five. First Peter chapter five, verse five to 11, and we'll close with these verses to encourage you today. I just want to encourage you that God will deliver you. God will give you the victory. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 5, verse 11, and we'll read together. It says, Likewise, you younger people, submit yourselves to your elders. Amen? This is key, that we would submit ourselves not to just any elder, but the elders of your church who are teaching you the words of God. Your church leadership. Amen. When there's a study going on, hop on that Zoom study and be faithful to it. Why? Because your deliverance and your victory is lying in wait for you. It's the word of God. Submit yourselves to your elders who are, who are studying the word of God and preaching and teaching you the word of God so that way you would be successful in life and be righteous and holy. Peter says, yes, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with humility in our fellowship. Don't forsake the fellowship, church. Submit to one another. Pray for one another. And he says this, 
clothe yourselves with humility. For God resists the proud. That's what Haman was. He was proud because he was second in charge. And everyone else who was following Haman, Haman's sons. Notice we didn't, we didn't read anything else about Haman's wife, Haman's household, Haman's sons. They all scattered because God resists the proud. But gives grace to the humble. Amen? Verse 6, therefore humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Church, God is working in you, and he's, tra- he's perfecting you, and he's wanting to make you a mighty man and a woman and, and a boy and a girl of God. And the reason why he hasn't perfected that yet is because you keep interrupting his molding process, his making process in your life. Every time he's trying to make you into this nice vessel, you always got to mess it up with, let me interject, Lord. How about a little bit of this? <laughs> And it takes forever for us to learn our lesson because we keep interrupting God. But verse 7 says, casting all your care upon him for he cares for you. Amen, church? Amen. Provision comes from God. Protection comes from God. And all we ought to do is cast all of our cares on him. Yes. Verse 8, be sober. Be sober, church. Amen. Amen. Be vigilant. Continue to pursue in him, endure the hardships of your life because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He's waiting for you to fall. That's why he tells Mordecai, Esther, continue to endure. Esther says, if I perish, then I perish. I'm going to do what is right for such a time as this. I'm not going to let up. I'm not going to give up. Because the enemy is prowling around. He's praying for those that are weak. And that's a P-R-E-Y. He's praying. He's not praying for your goodness. He's praying on you that he would row you. Devour you. Right? Verse 9. Resist him. Steadfast in the faith. Knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. You know, many times we, we, we are, you've come through 2020, and you're like, Lord, why me? I'm the only one that is suffering this. And then did, did you forget there was billions, billions of others around the world who are going through the same thing that you are going through, brothers and sisters in Christ, and perhaps even much worse than what you are going through. And Jesus reminds us, hey, if I'm persecuted, if I suffer, and you are my followers, guess what? You will suffer as well. You will be persecuted as well. But he says this, I have overcome the enemy. I have overcome death and life. And so in me, church, you will have the victory. In Christ Jesus, church, you will have the victory. Verse 10, but may the God of all grace, amen, who called us to his eternal glory, By Christ Jesus, this is your final destination, is his eternal glory. By Jesus Christ and Christ alone. None other. Not by Peter. Peter is saying he's not the way. Not by the apostle Paul Paul and all the apostles and disciples. Thank God for their amazing work and perseverance. But this is what the apostles and disciples boast on, is Christ Jesus and him alone. This is whom I stand before you today, church, and boast in is Christ Jesus and him alone. Amen? After you have suffered a while, perfect, established, strengthen, and settle in you. May the God of all grace perfect you, establish you, strengthen you, and settle you. In Christ Jesus. Amen? Verse 11. To him be the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. Promotion comes from God. Amen. I would love to say to those that are 
not settled in their life today, that satisfaction comes from God. Amen? That peace comes from God. Holiness doesn't come from your religious duties. Holiness comes from the Lord. And the Lord will tell you, read his word. Study his word. Let his word overtake you. Cleanse you. Fill you. And you will be perfect, established, and strengthened. In Christ Jesus. So that we would live lives that is like verse 11. That would give him glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. 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 Can we give God a hand of praise this morning? <laughs> that our promotion comes from the Lord alone. Everything that we lack and void in our lives, it comes from God alone. If you're lacking wisdom, wisdom com comes from the Lord. If you're lacking uh, uh, understanding, it comes from God. Church, I want to encourage you today as we close out the book of Esther. Amen. We close out another book together. We see God working in a mighty way. God is working in your life in a mighty way. That we would close out the chapter of 2020 just like chapter 10 talks about Mordecai's advancement and his promotion. That we would finish this year regardless of what had happened. Giving God all the glory and honor. Amen. Amen. I look back and at the, the loss that I've had as well. I don't look and I don't dwell on that. But I praise God for that because it's a reminder of how God has brought me through this time and this season, my family and I, and has given us peace, perfect peace in Christ Jesus alone. Amen? Yes. We, yes. There are times where I sit and I, and I think about my brother. I think about my mom. I think about our loved ones in our church. And, and I begin to, to get emotional and cry. But God is greater. God's peace is greater. And his joy is greater. So it tells me that I can be in any situation and circumstance of my life and still give praise and glory to God because he is a faithful God to us. Amen. And my encouragement to you today, regardless of what circumstance and situation you may be going through, I want to let you know that God can give you peace. He can make a way out for you if you trust and believe in him. And let his words minister to your heart. He will make a way for you. And he will give you the peace and the love and the joy that you are seeking. And most of all, he can forgive you of your sins and give you a brand new life in his son, Christ Jesus. Amen. Do you believe that today, church? Amen. Can we give God another hand of praise this morning for his goodness? Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we love you. We thank you so much, Lord, for your words of encouragement today. Even as I'm speaking, Lord God, I, I thank you for ministering to my soul, reminding me of all that you've done, reminding me, Lord God, to, to, to stay focused and stay planted and rooted in you, Lord. I mean, there's, there's no all other alternative to your love and your grace. The only thing aside from your hope is hopelessness and trusting in the world. The only thing to joy, Lord God, uh, aside from this is, is not having joy. Not having peace. But Father, thank you for reminding us this morning that only you can give us true peace and joy and satisfaction. So, Father, we come to you this morning. We ask for your forgiveness, Lord. There were times in our lives, Lord God, that we walked away or doubted in our hearts, troubled beyond uh, what we are supposed to, to feel in our hearts and not trusted in you. Forgive us, Lord. Father, as we see this morning that promotion 
comes from you in due time. You are working in our hearts. You want us to rise up and to sing your praises to all generations. So, Father, I pray this blessing upon our church and everyone online this morning. We give you all the glory and all the honor in your name we pray. If you're worshiping with us this morning and the Holy Spirit is working in your heart and you don't have a relationship with Christ Jesus and you want to make things new today as we close out 2020, as we go into 2021, you want to make things right. You want a new life. We're not promoting religion. We're not promoting tradition or legalism. We are promoting Christ Jesus and a relationship with him. In John chapter 3, we spoke about earlier, Jesus says, you must be born again. But you must accept him, have faith in him, as Ephesians chapter 2 says. By his grace, you are saved. So this morning, if that is you, you want to accept Christ in your heart. You want to live a new life and be born again. And you want, want to start things new. Repeat these words with me today. You are not joining our church or anything else. You are joining the family of God. And you are having a relationship that is true, that is meaningful with him and him alone. If that's you, repeat these words with me. Simply say, Lord Jesus. Forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Take control of my mind, my heart, and my soul. Today, I believe that you are the Son of God who came to this earth and died for my sins. And on the third day you rose from the dead and you ascended into heaven and you will be returning again and I want to be ready when you come back. So Jesus, take control of my life. I pray this prayer in your mighty, gracious, holy, matchless name. Amen. If you said that prayer today, we are excited for you. <laughs> Praise God. Would you let us know? Would you comment below? Or if you're worshiping with us in the church house and this is your first time saying that prayer, would you come forward? Our pastors and leaders would love to pray with you today. But we're going to continue in a time of worship. Amen, church? Amen. Please join us today as we're going to come sing our, our last song today. Open up your heart and your mind and be open to what God's going to do for you this week, what God's doing for you right now. Give him praise and worship. Sing with us today, amen. Praise God. Let's all stand to our feet this morning. Father, we just want to sing out that we love you, Lord. We appreciate you for all that you've done. How you saved us and made a way for us. Looking back at all that you've done. Looking forward to all that you will do, Lord. We thank you. Jesus, we love you.
God a hand of praise this morning. Amen. Father, you are the one that we adore, Lord God. Father, we thank you for your word reminding us, Lord, that we need to put our eyes on you, stay focused on you, Jesus, and not the things around us, Lord. Trust in you, Lord, that you are working in our lives. Father, forgive us, Lord, for all the things that we've done wrong. Continue to teach and correct us, Lord. Direct our paths, Lord. And Father, we thank you for reminding us that promotion, provision comes from you. Protection comes from you. Father, we lift up all of those uh, family and friends that are sick with sickness, Lord, disease, illness. Healing comes from you, Lord Jesus. Father, as we leave today, May your people be encouraged in you. May your Holy Spirit continue to work in our lives and walk with us, Lord, every single day. Father, we are careful to give you all the glory and honor that you deserve in Christ Jesus. We thank you and we praise you in all of God's people's sin. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a hand of praise this morning. Amen. Amen. Well, God bless you, church. We love you. Greet one another. Have a blessed day, and we'll see you next year. Amen? <laughs> God bless you. Merry Christmas once again. Happy New Year. Have a blessed day.